The Stonehouse Museum in Bulya is not just your ordinary small town museum. Centred around what is said to be the oldest residence in town, the museum displays artefacts and memorabilia, giving an insight into town history, pastoral history, including equipment used in the days of drovers and stock camps, indigenous history of the region and fossil history stretching back to when this whole region was an ocean bed. Dinosaur Dick is the man to guide the visitor through this 100 million year history, starting with the stone house that when storekeeper James Jones built it in 1880 would have reflected a certain amount of affluence in the remote region. Hello, I'm Dick, I'm Dick Suter uh, from the Stonehouse Museum in Bullia. Also uh, do quite a bit of fossil collecting in the area and have got, got quite, a, quite a bit of a display set up here. The stone house is uh, a house set up back as a house. That was originally uh, uh, built for a, a storekeeper from uh, James Edward Jones and his wife Margaret and their family from Armadale, which they lived in for quite a number of years before she cleared off down to uh, uh, Townsville with the three youngest daughters. And uh, at a later stage that was sold out, sold away and changed hands twice. Eventually Mabel came back into the district in 1939. She'd already remarried and uh, to an unrelated Jones and uh, moved back into the house and was there until uh, 1971 when she died. The house has actually uh, been set up to, to, uh, as it was, was when Mabel Jones was living in it because they couldn't uh, take it back to the, the earlier days because of the uh, rendering of the, wa the inner walls. The walls were rendered six years after Mabel, Mabel died. My brother got me interested in, uh, in uh, fossils in 1994 when we went out looking for uh, a fish the other side of the Hamilton, east of the Hamilton Channels, and uh, uh, by the end of the day we had half a fish. The following weekend he said, let's go and get a dinosaur. So we went out and got a couple of big knobbly ends of limb bones 50 metres away from the road going to Winton, upper, upper end of, of, the, of the humerus of, uh, of Chronosaur, the largest marine reptile in the, in the, in the inland sea. And uh, after that we sort of got hooked on it, and uh, each winter we'd do two or three weeks in the field. We got extremely good at it because we we learnt out how to uh, locate these things systematically in the, on the second season. Once we get them in here, we uh, separate the things that are worth keeping, sort of thing, or even out in the field. If it's not if the material is not worth keeping, we shot it back down the hole and rebury it because it was safer under the ground than above. And uh, eventually, if we've got a, a good specimen with showing promise, we'll I'll work on it and uh, remove the rock and then put it on display. Well, the first uh, thing we found that was really <coughs> our most extensive was the, uh, uh, an extensive ichthyosaur. It was our first ichthyosaur we found, actually. Uh, that was in 19, 1995. And uh, that, <coughs> that's actually in the catacombs in the South Australian Museum at present. It was quite an interesting specimen because it had plates of uh, Inoceramus bivalve shell uh, stuck all over the snout. All the fossils here actually belong to the Queensland Museum. they all got QM numbers on them. I finished up with uh, people donating stuff. Robbo at the caravan park donated 240 objects that would be suitable for our museum. Most of them <coughs> big machinery out the back and, uh, and, and other old engines and, uh, and other artefacts in the, in the far end of the, uh, the long shed. <laughs>